time to get the tractor ready to plant some sweet corn. So we gotta get the fertilizer on it, planter, adjustments, back in a minute. All right guys, welcome back. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Um, hope you enjoyed the last video planting the broccoli. I may try to squeeze a pitcher or two in right now or may even walk out there. I'm not sure what we'll do. Depends on how long this video is. Uh, it took off, it's doing good. I think I got a rabbit somewhere that likes some cabbage because I seen a plant the other day that he had eat off to the nub. Didn't see no deer tracks, maybe, but anyway. Um, we're gonna put the fertilizer on here today. I told Will, I, I don't normally film me putting fertilizer on it ever since I did a video probably three years ago, putting the fertilizer on. But that was a long time, guys, and I was pretty, pretty good shy of the camera. Not that I'm overly confident now, but hopefully I can bring something to you be a little better. I'm fixing something right now. We'll get down here and see it. It's been quite a few times that I have mentioned that I never tighten this bolt up right here and one reason why i never tighten it up is because <laughs> it had dirt in it and it never would go no further than just a quarter halfway in there so we're fixing that today because i just couldn't bring myself to showing you install another fertilize and not being able to tighten this bolt up like i ought to be able to so we're going to finish reaming this out and uh Oh yeah, it's got good junk coming out on that backside. Looks like mud dauber's nest and everything else. We'll squirt a little more slick em up juice in there. And then we'll have this thing where she'll spin on and off. Well, we got the, what we wanted, cleaned out on the tractor. And now, I bought this little kit off of Amazon. It, not a very great, great, great clip. But, all right, guys, got our hands back clean temporarily. So we're gonna be, we're gonna leave the planter like it is. Wanted to point out a couple of things about the planter. This planter has a depth control plate on it. And this plate is what doesn't allow it to get so deep and I can adjust it from here and that'll let that thing go up and down. The reason why when I use this planter, I want an even bed and I can't have no furrows in there or I, I need it to be no furrows because that plate doesn't allow it to go so deep and it won't allow it to go into those furrows. Now having said that, we've discovered or I've discovered in messing with the this planter a little bit it will do that we're going to plant the hastings with that i got a plan uh, hopefully y'all like it it's kind of an old school way of planting so hopefully we'll do that so we need to put the main drive unit on the tractor the hopper unit the scrape blade and obviously the planter now comes the time <coughs> running a planter let me show you what running this bar does to a planter, to a, at least an international planter. See this bar, guys, it's bent back. It's bent back because when it was in there, that bar was against this. And if you let that center link down, it put, put this at an angle, and this bar here bent that. Same thing happened to this one right here. Uh, somebody had the center link on it when they were running this planter and of course it bent, bent it pretty good. Um, we'll probably straighten those up one day. I just wanted to show you what that was. So now I showed you why we're taking this bar off, which is to keep from damaging the planter. And also, it has the planter, uh, here's the front of the planter. It had the back wheel of the planter kicked up in the air. When I put this bar off, it's gonna have the planter more level. So that's what we're doing. So we'll just take this and uh, undo it there and watch your bolt roll away. I went ahead, guys, off camera and took the jam nut out. 
All right, one of the fun parts is get, getting under here. And that is what we're aiming for is a little, it looks like the bottom of that center link bar. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it, Bill? Mm -hmm. We gotta put it in here. And it's not too bad if you kind of use your knees and put it up in there. Get a bolt started. Come back till you fill the hole. Give it a jerk, make sure you're in it. Cause I have put it in there before, put the bolt all the way across, tighten them. <laughs> it wasn't in the hole, it was just kind of jammed up there. And I don't know what that thing would do if it fell off. I don't know if it jacked the end of your tractor up or not. All right, just for a little prep guys, have, have these out pretty decent. Maybe just a quarter way in. And you stay right here, Will. And look at here, guys. Ooh, I ain't been able to do that right there. And since the whole time I've owned this tractor. Probably should have done that a long time ago. But you know how things go. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> All right, so we'll take our drive unit. And honestly, most time I can just put this thing under there and don't even think about it. But since I'm doing it on camera, it's probably going to be a big ordeal. All right, she's on there. The bottom is not on there, so we'll, we'll want to get that bottom on first. And this is the part, guys, where I, I never worried about tightening it down. But today, we will. So we're going to tighten this one down first. Y'all forgive me now, because I hadn't had to tighten this down a long time. Now, I tighten that one down this i don't know guys if you run it that way or if you can run it this way i kind of like being on that side of the chain with it is where i like for it to be okay that's tight now and that'll be there and of course it would be off of this cog right here this is the only part about putting fertilizer on this tractor is if you've been greasing it like you should it is full of grease all right i'm well, good now we're on both cogs I'm going to say somewhere about right there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we'll find us a good comfortable seat here. Run it up as far as you can with your hand to save yourself some time. I think probably what's going to happen, guys, my, my fertilized drive's not going to work right because that's, I think this is the first time I've ever had that bolt tight on the bottom. Okay, tight here, here. This is the rod that puts, puts the fertilize in and out of gear. So it, when it goes down, it makes a connection over there with some cogs and it allows it to start turning here. Uh, actually, when it does that, um, this takes it out of gear while it's up. And obviously when you let this front down, it's gonna let it go in gear. 
it goes in a little hole right here. Find that one, put that in there. So now all we need to do is put the fertilized drive on. Well, I say fertilized drive, the hopper drive. This one's gonna drive the hopper. I may have did it too quick for wheel. <laughs> it's just go in like so. And I probably had these things out way more than I really needed to. But it's better than sitting there playing with it. This is an IH hopper base. If any of you guys follow the channel much, <clears throat> you'll know that I have a John Deere base from a 1010 John Deere hopper that I fixed up. And uh, it'll go on any tractor. It's not specially made for my tractor. It's actually made to just go on an international tractor. And it works real well. It's a nice hopper. We may use it later on in the year. All right, so hopper's on, this is on, bar's gone. This is where, put a little bit of this grease on my fingers on that thing right there. This is where the bent arm would come in if I needed to do some plowing and I had to have my um, bar on and I didn't want to take this fertilizer off. This is when I would put that bent arm on if I didn't want to take this off. So, got to get the chain for this one. There is one link difference between the chain that I use for the International Hopper versus the John Deere Hopper. So we'll just put the chain on and I want to point out a couple things here after I put it on. Um, and I'm not saying good or bad okay chains on now guys i've taken a couple of links out of this chain there is a an idler that goes here and i think the spring hooks to this it's a oh man what's those things called will pinhole no carter pin it's a carter pin that's bratted over and I think the spring hooks on the loop of that carter pin. And what would happen, it's like a little L looking thing and the cog rides right here and it just puts spring tension just like it on that chain, just a little bit of spring tension. I don't have one. Hadn't had to have one. Um, I think maybe because I try to run a, a good fertilizer. Look at there, I got a little rust. I try to run a good fertilizer Here's what we were talking about, guys. I washed this thing like you wouldn't believe this past fall. And you just can't stop that rust. So now the reason why you see me continuing using these old hoppers, and I haven't yet to use the new hopper I have. So anyway, all right, we're going to grease this up and get the hopper on. Okay, guys, somebody in the comments tell me what happens every time you get a grease gun off the wall. Y'all know what happens. It's empty. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> there we go. Had a subscriber ask me today, guys, about uh, tightening these arms up. And yes, you can put a washer on the inside of them here. I think helps, and these washers here, right here, help. But other than just having a new one, or maybe machining you a bushing, that's about the only thing I know. Uh, I know Birch Store, Brandon at Birch Store sells a reproduction of that. Um, how good is it? I don't know. Is it IH metal good? I, I, I don't know to say if it is or not. I just use the go till I start seeing a little bit of grease. And as much as this thing's around fertilized, I rarely ever try to, I rarely ever try to clean that thing perfectly clean. 
we missed that one the other day, Will. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit the planter while we're standing here. That is one thing good about the depth control on this planter. It won't fall over. <laughs> it looked like it, but it won't. Either this planter or my other planter is going to get quite a bit of seat time on some sunflowers. We're not sure which one I'm going to use yet. And it probably depends on how we do the land. If the land is not perfectly flat, then we're probably going to use that other planter. You could just about you could just about skip the grease here a season, honestly. I mean, it really, you just about could. But you, you want to hit that thing about every time. Okay, so we got that, that. We need to put my hopper together, guys. So my hopper, every year, I try to take this thing apart. Make sure you don't lose this little key right here, because that's what's going to drive it. I try to take this thing apart and wash it and leave it apart and I actually spray I spray WD-40 all in this thing and as you can see it's gone now and there's a little fertilized rust right there uh oh the uh, rust had done started getting to that bolt a little bit so let's put this hopper together here we need to Put this in the bottom. Got to get it up under here. Come on. Sometimes she wants to be mean. And we'll put a flow gate back on. By the way, that's what that was, is a flow gate cover. Should line up for a hole in the bottom of it there. Okay, that's back in there. Let's make sure we get our cog in there. And we're gonna set this right here for just a second and get our tube and put in here. I do like this tube better than I do the, uh, or actually the way this tube holds in here better than I do the John Deere. If you'll notice how it fits in there nice and that hopper is going to go right down in there. So we're going to put that on now. Okay. Cog on. And she's on guys. We were talking about the disc, I think on last video, and I said, well, <laughs> and unfortunately this is one of those deals again where I have no idea the flow rate. But I do know, this cuts this thing supposedly off right here. That's wide open right here. I have found out that because there is some, uh, what I call uh, some fall by. There is some fall by in this hopper. I have found it about right here, almost closed, is a good place for me to be. And if we need to adjust it some, we'll, we can do that in the field. But we're going to start right there. And... I can barely get my finger under it, so that's where we'll start. Using 10, 10, 10 today, and we'll we'll mount this hose maybe about that far from the planter. All right, guys, before I forget, so this is how I knock my rolls down. I mean, let me put a cuff on here and put that nowhere for wheel. All this is, 
is a scrape blade that I found. <laughs> I think back in the day when they scraped the dirt roads, I've told this before, it, when they changed the blade, they just took it off the scrape blade and tossed it over on the side of the road. And I found it probably in the mid 80s. I couldn't have been 12, 13 years old. I cut this side off with a grinding, with a disc wheel. And it just so happened that these two bolt holes lined up. But I've often told folks, you know, because I've had people ask me, man, I'd like to have one of those on my tractor. I think if you just got a, I, honestly, you could probably make a piece of wood work or just any piece of metal and just have it, you know, whatever width this is and two holes and two, two feet and you can put it right up under this tractor. It is a little hard to get under here. You need two people to do it. Um, you have to raise both sides up equally and have them equal length across and so it, sometimes it can be a little a little bit cumbersome to do it but um, that's what we're going to do is get this on all right we'll put your cuff put the hole to the inside and remember it's going to have to be all the way up i'll send you yours and like I said, the, probably the best way is to hold the cuff itself. Now tilt it forward a little bit. There you go. Tell me when you're in. That was a heartbreaker, wasn't it? <laughs> I think it's level now. Okay, Let's see if you can get that nut on there. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to see. Yeah, that's pretty level. It may be a, just a tick low on your side, but it's okay. Unfortunately, the blade is something that has to come on and off if I do something else like some, uh, uh, you know, maybe some disking up rolls, which we got to do. And this time when I make up some rolls, I want them to be as tall as possible because I am going to plant some stuff with the planter. Um, hope y'all, speaking of planter, I hope y'all like that. Um, I think, I don't know if I said it in the beginning of the video, but I, I know I could have done it quicker without the planter, but it was just something that, you know, wanted to show. In today's video, what I kind of wanted to get across is, you know, what it takes you, you guys see me, I say, okay, let's go plant some corn, and I'm planting corn. And say, like, oh man, he's planting corn, that's good to go. <laughs> I just wanted to show you what it would take to, to set this thing up, uh, and some of the bolts and stuff. And so let's put the planter in. We need to turn our hitch around. That'll keep you from losing that thing. Hopefully, as long as you ain't in no big grass. And if you're in some grass, I would probably take it all the way off. We'll just, I usually just put, put it in there like that. And there we go. She's in there. So I have the small wheel on this planter up front, and the large wheel on the back. So it's gonna be rotating it pretty fast, guys. The reason why we're rotating it pretty fast is because I have a a 1962A medium seed corn in here and it's only 6, 8, 9, 10, no 8. Woo. I had normal math. I, I didn't have common core math, so I was wrong. <laughs> so, starting from this little dibbit thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight cells. I have found from the other year when we were planting, I've tried it a couple ways. I got a 16 cell corn, and I've tried it with the 16 on a slow. And when I say slow, is that in there? Yeah, I guess it's in there. 
when I say slow, I mean the little cog in the back and the big cog on the planter. And it was still, a, it, it, it was a little thick. I have noticed this to be about the best, best one for me. Okay, so the planter's ready. Trotter's ready. All we gotta do is put fertilizer in it. And uh, when we get ready to plant it, and we will go from there and see how you like it. Let's go out and look at those uh, broccoli before we end this video. I want to, oh, Will's truck. Well, in which I, <laughs> I just took it from Will. Will said, Dad, I, I, my clutch is going out. Or well, my pilot bearing is going out. So we took the clutch down. I do think he had a, the uh, throw out bearing was going out. I don't know, let me see. Maybe y'all can hear that. I'll turn the volume up on it, hopefully you can. I do think that's the noise he was hearing. And so we pulled her in here, cause I, I done paid about a, two, three years ago, Will? Somewhere in there, maybe three, maybe four. And it, guys, Will don't drive rough. Um, and you know, for it to be going out that quick when I paid $650 to get a clutch put in it, I said, Will, you know, I didn't feel good about paying somebody to do it when I did it, but we were in the middle of the summer and we was pushed for time and then I got somebody to do it. So uh, I'm gonna do it this time myself. And you know, I don't know, it may just be a bad part. It, it may not be nothing anybody did, but we said we're gonna do it ourselves this time and that's what we're doing. So the transmission's on the ground. Obviously I have the throw out bearing and uh, had to get a pilot removal tool. The only other thing, I may have to borrow from a friend at church. Some of you guys may know, you know a little bit about this. We pulled the cross member down and it was tight coming down. Uh, so hopefully, I, if it's tight going back up, I'm gonna get one of those jacks and spread the H frame just, just a few thousands, just a few thousands to get that cross member to kind of go up in there without having to beat it and all this and that and take a, uh, I think you call it a, lady finger lady something lady something crowbar with the pointed end on it and we'll line all the holes up and get that in there and go from there and we'll just look at your bolts there i don't forgot how they go on there mm. <laughs> we'll figure it out i guess but so that's why will's truck's here and uh you know hopefully we'll do it. let's look at the garden all right guys as i'm walking out here i can see some nubbing action going on and let's look in here okay it probably was a deer here's a deer track here and he eats some on that broccoli eat some on that broccoli i mean as you can see i mean they got their color they they lived and took off just fine i mean i i hate seeing this but you know a whole lot i can do right now i don't have electric fence around this garden but um, at least I'm proud of the stand it got. I think that worked out pretty good with the planter. We got some potatoes coming up. They're starting to bust the ground pretty consistent to where the planter was. Uh, you can't tell it probably, but there's one nosing out right there. There's one nosing out right there. Um, I see them on down through there. So I think we'll be okay on the potatoes. The onions are looking pretty good down there. And of course the the garlic, which obviously deer don't like, or they'd be done eat them all to pieces. Um, can't ask for better on that. They probably just need to be next next time I get the rolling cultivators on there, just wrap them a little bit and go from there. So yeah, potatoes great, garlic great, yeah, broccoli. Well, you know maybe it can. It's funny how they'll eat on that one and leave those four. Eat a little bit on that one and leave that one. I don't know. But one thing's for sure, I'm going to have to, uh, before we get real serious about those sweet potatoes and purple hoiled peas, there's going to have to be a fence put around this. Um, 
got, got to do something or it's just not going to work. I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit on the fence, so to speak, of what, what I'm going to do. I, I, just if I do get electric fence, just for money wise, I'm probably just going to try one fat ribbon about that big, maybe, maybe about that high off the ground, and that's that's what we're going to have to try to do. To, or I may, I don't know. I may put the, I may put the uh, motion detector middle ways of the field and just hope it does enough to keep them at bay or away. It just depends. I just don't know that I want to invest, you know, probably two, three hundred dollars. We may try to, we may just try the motion detector and see what she'll do and see if she'll keep them out. But I want to wish everybody a happy Resurrection Day. Thank you all for tuning in. Everybody who made it this far, God bless you. And, uh, Thank you, and you know, when I say Resurrection Day, we all know it is Easter, but there always seems to be some other name to kind of take away from the meaning of the day that we're celebrating. So, uh, the day Jesus rose again from the grave, it would, if, if it was not for the day, uh, it wouldn't be finished. But we know he rose, it's finished, and we have a Savior, so thank you guys. God bless you, we'll see you.